in. All right, today's our final look at the crucifix series uh, from our positional two of uh, the nine point you know movement series that we did from the, the turtle position to the quarter position. Okay, so today we always bring a little bit more wrestling focus into the class and build on top of it. So we're going to work the same drill we did last time to get us down to the front headlock so that we can present, uh, continue our, our movement drill. So we're going to work to get our collar ties, right? So we're going to work, your hand's going to come through, find the inside collar control, and then the other hand's going to come inside and find that bicep tie. We're going to work to, uh, to snap our, our partner down to the front headlock and spin to position two. Okay, so we're just getting a little bit more on the feet. Can I have our John, please? Okay, so remember, good wrestling stance, right? Nice, nice bend to our knees, okay? Remember, always reaching with our rear hand to judge distance, okay? We wanna protect our lead leg. So if the first thing I do is start reaching with my lead hand, it opens up the shot to my lead leg, okay? So anytime we're trying to initially make contact with our hands, we generally want it to be with our rear hand, okay? So I want us to find our rear collar tie. So we're wrestling here, I come through, boom, I want my rear collar tie so I can still protect my lead leg. Okay, once I get my rear collar tie, I'm gonna get inside my, uh, my bicep control, okay? So right here. So I got collar tie and inside bicep control. Okay, remember, we're gonna work to fake a shot. We're gonna get the person to kind of kick their legs back a little bit because they don't want to get you know shot on. So they're gonna kind of do like a half sprawl. So it doesn't matter really which hand you could do. You could do it with the collar tie hand. You could do it with the inside control hand, okay? You can even do it by just stepping with your foot, okay? Because remember, that first step is usually that first step into closing the distance to getting into the takedown. So it doesn't really matter how you create that kind of reaction. All I want to do is I want to get his foot moving back a little bit. And now from here, I'm gonna do a heavy snap. Boom, right to my front headlock. Okay, remember our position, shoulder in the knot of the neck, cup in the chin strap, and then I'm controlling the tricep. Okay, boom, right here. All right, and then remember, we wanna own the space between his knee and elbow, so we're gonna pull him away, insert our knee, pivot. Right here, position two. Okay, this is where we're gonna work our crucifix series from. Okay, but I just want us to kinda of get a little bit of work in, it's a little extra warm up kind of thing. Good wrestling stance, collar tie, and step bicep control. Take the shot, snap down to the front headlock, okay? When you're doing the snap down, think about like, like wringing out a towel, a wet towel, okay? So you wanna actually have like loose shoulders. Don't try to like force them down with tight you know, chest and shoulders. It's gotta be a little bit like a looser feel, okay? Okay, we're here, boom, boom, we're moving around. Take the shot, right down to our front headlock. You don't even have to wait, right from the shot, boom. You can pivot right away if you notice that elbow and knee connection isn't there, okay? But if they turtle up and they shell up, then we wanna make sure that we pull, pivot, and rotate so that we own that position, because that's what we're gonna to use to start trapping this arm and attacking the neck, okay? Any questions? Real simple, collar tie, inset bicep control, fake a shot, snap down to the front headlock, and work to position two. Questions? All right, one, two, three. It's a really good drill, guys. That's, you don't yeah. like wrestling? Man, doing. snap down is awesome, yeah, right? You can really fake a shot, snap the person down, you bring it right to the ground without having to take a shot. All right, so if you don't like wrestling, but you like to get it to the floor, instead of pulling guard, try to work something like this. All right, snap him down. Even if you can snap him down to like a guillotine. All right, where can he be here? I can snap him into a guillotine initially, right? I can attack right here if I want to. Okay, so you don't have to snap him always right down to the floor. You can just snap him and cup their chin into like a guillotine position. Thread him with the guillotine. A lot of times they'll drop down to defend their neck. Okay, it's a lot easier to defend the guillotine when you, when you drop down a little bit, all right? So yeah, you can do it right from here. Boom, we're here. I snap into the front headlock position, right? And maybe he drops down because he's defending his neck from the guillotine. Yeah, he wants to get his hands here, all right? So he puts his knees on the ground so it's a little bit easier to defend. He can work the turns of his hip if he needs to, to defend a little bit more, all right? So okay. snap down, very easy way to get the fight to the ground without having to shoot, okay? Awesome. All right, let's rotate a little bit. Perfect, okay, so now, so we got here, right? We pull him away from his knees, knee and elbow connection loosens up. So now I pivot, and I want to make sure I own this space right here. He's gonna work to try to lock his elbow back down, right? Yeah, yeah. He's trying to get that space inside, right? So as long as I keep my knee between his uh, elbow and knee, I can start to work to uh, trap this arm. Okay. First thing I need to do is I need to get some connection to him. Okay. So I can do that by just doing like a two-on-one grip on his far arm. Okay, maybe we're, we're not over committing our body position. Okay, we want a good chest to back connection, but don't over commit it. If he Peterson rolls, I'm gonna be kind of late to everything I might need to post. Okay, so keep my weight back a bit, but good chest to back connection. Okay, so I can get a two on one on the far wrist. Okay, or I can get my traditional seatbelt grip. It's fine. Okay, either way. Okay, I'm just making sure that I own this space between his knee and elbow. Okay, right from here. I wanna work to trap this arm, because if I try to choke him, it's still two hands against two hands. Okay, so what I want to do is, is try to trap the arm. Okay, so we're here, boom. Once I get my knee in place right here, I want to use my knee and I want to kind of open up his elbow. 
Okay, it kind of breaks his base down a little bit and exposes my knee a little bit more. Now all I want to try to do is I want to try to fit my heel right onto my knee. That's it. All right, right onto my knee. From here, right, if you're able to use your hand, use your foot, you can peel the arm back and then work to get the choke from here. Okay. A lot of times it's tough because he's got to have he's got to have weight on this elbow. It's going to be hard to just pull back. Okay. So once I get my knee and elbow connected, okay, I get my seatbelt or my two-on-one, what I want to do is I want to drive this knee to the floor, making sure that I keep that heel and, uh, and knee really, really pinched together, okay? So I'm really actively forcing my heel to my knee, right from here, okay? I want to drive my knee to the floor, and then I'm going to pull up on his far shoulder, all right? And I'm going to take him to the crucifix. So right from here, I got a good connection. I drive my knee to the floor, and then I pull him up on top of me, and then we're right here, okay? Now there's no weight on his elbow, right, because now he's on his back, it's going to be a lot easier to peel that heel back and start to trap. And now we're right here in the crucifix, okay? So I trapped his arm with my right leg, right? If I only trap it with the right leg, he can still get his arm in play. So bring your hand inside, like a, bring your right hand in, like to try to protect your neck. Yeah, yeah, see, right? right? Just so he's got long enough arms, all right? So what I want to do is after I trap it with my, with my right leg, I want to come up over the top with my left leg, and I want to catch his uh, wrist in between my ankles, Okay, see now that's a much more stable position and it's gonna be a lot harder for him to bring that hand into play to create defense. Okay, now here we go. I got one arm trapped. All I gotta do is switch to a one-on-one -on -one grip. Okay, I work to control that little pinky meat, not the wrist generally. The wrist is gonna be a lot easier for him to break that, that grip. Right? Even if I have a C grip, all right, the angle is hard to break that grip. Yeah, it's very, it's very easy. So if I come here and I come up to this pinky meat right here, and then I work to really pinch the pinky meat and it's gonna be a lot harder for him to pull that away. I have more leverage on his arm, okay? So just try that. When you're in this position right here, grab that little meat of the pinky right there, and then work to internally rotate his pinky. Everybody see the difference? It's gonna be a lot more leverage. It's gonna be a lot harder for him to break that grip, okay? All right, I wanna make sure that I keep my chest underneath his back. If he scoots his butt away, right? See, now I can't lift his chin anymore because now my chest is forcing his head down, right? So when you're in this crucifix position, what you want to try to work to do is keep your chest underneath his back so now there's some range of motion with his neck, okay? So now if he drops his chin, I can still work to lift it with my, with my knuckle and I'll get into how to do that, okay? But that's the big thing is don't let him scoot away too much. If he does, we come up on top and we just work the crucifix from the top position. But we're in this nice back position, so we're here. Okay, if he drops his chin, I right, want to find this little knuckle right here, and we're going to find where the jawline goes from up and down to like back and forth, right? Now the jaw is kind of like an L shape, so we want to find that little crook of the jaw. I want to put my knuckle right in it, and then I want to use it to like pry. All right, so it's like a little can opener. Once I lift it up, I keep ratcheting my hand until I get underneath his neck, and then I find his far lat, and then I connect to it. Okay, if I got long enough arms, you can grab your own shoulder, but I don't, so I just grab the lat right here, I cover it with my chin, and then I pull back with my elbow and finish it with one arm, okay? If you can develop that one arm strangle with that one arm choke, all right, it's gonna be a lot easier to finish. If you always need that second hand to get in play, it gives him a free hand to start to defend right away, right? I have to let go of that one-on-one -on -one grip before I can get that second hand to, to, uh, to help choke, all right? So uh, back to the turtle position. So we're just working the crucifix to the, uh, to the rear naked choke. So I pull, insert, pivot. Here we go, I got my seatbelt connection. Even if he tries to bring his elbow back in, I'm still there. So I use my knee to open the elbow up, heel up the knee connection, I drive my knee to the floor, pull him up on top of me. Notice how it's very easy to peel that hand back now that he's on his back. Other foot comes over top, secures the uh, wrist between my ankles. You see that pinch right there? Perfect. I get my one-on-one -on -one grip, and then I always start choking. All right, find that knuckle right underneath it. Can opener and then ratchet my wrist until I get all the way attached to his trice or his lat, cover it with your chin, and then just squeeze and pull back. Boom, you get the choke right from there. Okay? Got any questions? You guys want to see it again? One more time. Another angle. Let's do this angle here. Perfect. Okay, so I already fit him in right here, right? Seatbelt or two on one. Seatbelt or two on one, doesn't really matter. Two on one's probably a little bit better because I'm controlling the, the, the hand, all right? So while this is working, he's not using his other hand to defend it, okay? So two on one's good, seatbelt's fine. Open the knee, connect, knee and elbow. Drive my knee to the floor, pull him up on top of me, overlap my other leg, get that one on one, work to get underneath the chin, cover with my chin, and then squeeze. 
All right? I'll come around and help anybody out if they have questions. All right, one, two, three. That was solid. Okay, time. All right, cool. So we're not we're not getting the full back control. Okay, some people are are, are having both hooks in, which is okay. Right? If you roll the person, that's what we're gonna do like next. All right, but we're just working to bypass their hips and then just stay kind of perpendicular to them. Right, when we're on the back, we're parallel to them. All right, so we're kind of staying perpendicular and just trapping the arms together. That's what I call the curse right? Okay, so when you're doing that roll. Let their hips bypass your other leg so you can just focus on trapping that one arm, okay? So just real quick again. Right here, all right? And if I have this two-on-one, the two-on-one still goes over the shoulder. Don't come under, here. All right, yeah, you can get the two-on-one, but now I don't have a choking arm, all right? So you wanna always have a choking arm and a support arm, right? So the support arm is generally under the hook and the choking arm is over the shoulder, okay? And then I get my two-on-one here. I want to automatically, if I see that neck open, boom. And, and don't think that you have to go through this whole series to get the neck, right? If I'm in this position too, and I see his neck open, man, I just boom. You slip it, and then from here, you can go full ray or naked choke, right? And then get that support hand in there, okay? So anytime you see the chin open, you don't have to do the crucifix position, but it shouldn't be tough. Their, head, their chin's down, right? They're being very defensive, this position. That's why I work the crucifix. I get some defenses away from him, and then I start to, to work the choke, okay? But again, from here, right, once I get this heel and knee connection and I pull, don't try to get this other hook around. Not that you can't, all right? We're gonna do that next, okay? But we're just working the crucifix right now. And that, taking the back is gonna come into play if he does something here, okay? So let's, we're bypassing the back and just going right to the crucifix. So we're here, I drive my knee to the floor and I pull, all right? So now I'm really perpendicular to him and this is where I get my crucifix position, okay? And then again, if he scoots his butt away, he keeps scooting it away. Once I feel like I've lost the position, I keep the knee pinched together, I get up to my elbow, and then I just pivot. And now I'm in top crucifix position, okay? We work this uh, very good for a ground and pound, right? Step over the head, right? Ground and pound, we get, there's little triangles that you can get here, okay? So if you're in the crucifix and they start scooting their butt away, which is the correct defense, they want to get their back more to the max so they can't get choked, you just come up on top and you do crucifix from the top position where there's a whole series right there. Okay, we touched on a little bit. Okay, when we were doing, I think we were doing like side control, control positions, right? When they get their elbow in, we pin it to the floor, and we get to that like arm pin position. But we're going off on a tangent, okay? But we're bypassing the back initially, and we're taking the crucifix, okay? Now, we're gonna take the back, okay? So, same position, there, okay? So now we get here, right? I open up the knee. Last time we got to this position, I opened up the knee, I crucifix, and I choked him, okay? So he's like, oh, I'm not getting tilted this time. Okay, so now as I open up the knee, he hides his elbow, so he goes in front of the knee, and he tucks it really, really deep, all right? Really is deep in there, okay? So <laughs> now I can't get the crucifix, but what did he do? He effectively took a base point away from himself. Okay, so now it's gonna be very easy to tilt him over in this direction. Okay, so he tucked that elbow in to prevent getting crucifix, but it took a base point away, okay? So let's take advantage of it. And we're just gonna do a very simple, that same almost exact tilt, and now we're gonna just work to get to the back, okay? So again, we get the knee and elbow in here, right? I go to expose the elbow, he tucks it in. <clears throat> okay, now watch the little switch, right? So my right now my right knee is down, so I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna put my left knee down, and my right leg's gonna go up, and I'm gonna pull him on top of me, okay? This is gonna be my first hook, okay? So watch, slow motion. So we're here again, two on one, seatbelt doesn't matter. I'm gonna switch, and now I'm gonna pull him on top of me, and this is gonna be my first hook right here. I continue the roll, and I get my second hook in. Okay, now I just have the back. Very, very simple. Okay. Right here, all right, get my seatbelt, get my two on one. I go to expose the elbow, he tucks it in. same kind of system. We're going to go over the straight jacket choke, okay? Just to remind people what we're doing, okay? So once we get the back, the back is relatively simple, right? And I want to make sure that I fall to the head side, okay? So my head stays between him and the mat, just so we can work the straight jacket system. Okay, you guys remember what we did here, right? We have our one-on-one, -on -one. we go for the choke, he defends the choke. I let go of the one-on-one, -on -one. I come inside and I get that grip. So now I have this pinned to his stomach. He still has one hand, so 
He's defending. Perfect. I just want him, his hand to be occupied while I track this one. Throw him down. This pack comes over the top. Peels his heel back. And now I have his arm trapped. Go back to one-on-one. -on -one. And now it's the same position, just now on the back as opposed to being uh, in the crucifix. Okay, and I work the choke the same exact way. Okay, if he's got like, you know, really good back uh, escapes, he starts to hip over my leg, bring the hip over. Right back in the crucifix. All right, so I really didn't lose anything. All right, if he's able to get past that first hook, as long as I keep that arm trapped, I'm still in the crucifix, pull myself underneath, and I get that same exact choke that I did just a second ago. Okay, but this is just taking the back if he hides that arm initially. So it's gonna be a little easier to get the crucifix. Uh, and once we get the back and we do that straight jacket system. Okay. So everything's the same here. Boom, I go to get the crucifix, he tucks the elbow in. All right. Switch my base, drive my shoulder to the floor and pull him on top of me. My right hook is the first one in. There it is. Second hook comes around afterward, right? So that first hook is more important, right? This hook right here, this is keeping his hips locked in. So if I can't get this first hook in, the second hook in, maybe he brings his knee in, right? That's fine. I can just cross my ankles together and just pinch my knees. I still have the same kind of control, okay? And then eventually I can work to do the straight jacket. Right? Again, he's here, he grabs that hand. I grab that hand, I pull it down. He defends with the other hand. I get that trap. Cool. And the same idea. Get underneath the chin, tuck, and squeeze, okay? We did a deeper look at the straight jacket system, you know, year, uh, weeks past. You can go back and review it, okay? So this is over here. Okay, the big thing I want us to do today is just take the back from that crucifix position. Just getting that transition to the back. One more time. So we're here, all right? Pull, chuck, pivot. I go for the crucifix, he tucks his knee in. Switch, hook goes in. I want us to try to rotate all the way so that my head is between his head and the mat. Just makes the straight jacket a little easier to get to. Okay, again, I choke, he defends. I come inside, I grab that wrist, he defends. Trap this arm. One on one, and we're in business. Chin's down, I find my bullet, find his jaw, lift it up, branch of my hand, squeeze, okay? I really like to grab as deep as I can on his lat. Okay, if you got long enough arms, you can grab your shoulder. But man, you really need long arms to get a good grip on your shoulder. I would prefer you just reaching in between your chest and their lat That's and just important. grabbing onto that little meat right there. And then squeezing the muscles and pulling back. And getting the choke right there. Okay? All right, any questions? All right, let's give it a shot. One, two, three. Oh, that was you.